Hey guys, Caleb here, and in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at this minuscule $20 vintage lens that I recently found, and these are plentiful on eBay, so don't worry, this video won't ruin the market, if you will. But before we jump into this lens, there's a couple things I wanna note. First, we're in a new studio, so if you missed the series I did talking about this entire setup, make sure you check out that playlist. Secondly, if you enjoy these videos and wanna support the channel, you can check out our camera guides over at academy.dslr video shooter. We have one for just about any popular camera in our space, including Panasonic, Blackmagic, Sony, and Fuji. So with all that out of the way, what's the deal with this affordable, little, tiny, beautiful vintage lens? This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Indistar 61. These were produced mainly in the 60s through the 80s, and there are a huge variety of them and tons of them on eBay. So they're a Ukrainian lens, and depending on the year and the run of the lens, you'll get different colors and even different focal lengths. So let me grab a whole bunch more of these lenses that I picked up on eBay. I actually bought all five or six of these at once. They came together, and I think it cost me around 50 to 60 bucks. So very, very affordable. A great idea if you have a bunch of filmmaking or photography buddies or friends, and you could pick up a whole bunch of these and give them away as gifts. So here are the lenses that I have collected. You'll notice a couple different things about them. First and foremost, they all look a little bit different. This one has these little you know, knurled nubs here. And then this one right here is very smooth with a little focusing index. This one over here is black and silver. This one is also black and silver. I have a black one that's not on the table or in the studio with me. And uh, there's all kinds of different colors. Their lenses look slightly different. You can see the colors are a little different. And the focal lengths are different. Depending on the year, they have a different focal length. So this one right here is a 50 millimeter. You can see the little F5 centimeter. And then this one here is a 53. This one here is a 52 millimeter. So they're all slightly different, which is kind of fun. But they're all F2.8. So we're looking at a, around a 50 millimeter lens, F2.8 vintage for 20 bucks. So if you check the eBay link in the description, which is affiliated, just a heads up, uh, you'll find all these different variants. So what's the deal with this lens? Is it any good at all? And why am I even talking about them? Well, first, the cost is incredible. They're manual and they're a lot of fun for video. And I think the look is pretty impressive and very unique for 20 bucks. I recently took this lens out and did some video as well as some stills. So I'm gonna be playing that over my voice here and you can check out what this thing looks like. Everything I shot with this lens was shot wide open at f2.8 to give you an idea of kind of the worst case scenario and what the shallow depth of field looks like. I shot it on my a7 III, which I have right here. We'll talk about adapters here in a second. First and foremost, the lens just looks really nice, very cinematic, if you will. It's not too tacky and sharp, and I am loving older lenses like this on modern 4K cameras. So this camera has a 6K sensor, and it's downscaling that to 4K, so it can be overly crisp often. So you throw a lens like this on a camera, and by the way, it does cover full frame, which is amazing. You'll get this really nice combination of crisp 4K, but it's kind of eased into or where the edge is kind of taken off by these vintage lenses. Is it the sharpest lens? Hardly. Here's a comparison of this 50 millimeter up against the Canon 50 millimeter F1.8 or the Nifty 50. And you'll notice in the corners, you start to get a little bit of softening compared to the 51.8, which I set also to F2.8. And another problem, which a lot of us actually love, is the bokeh on this lens. Once you get to the edges of your frame, the out of focus areas begin to kind of curl, very similar to the Helios 44, which is a very popular 58 millimeter uh, on the internet if you're looking for vintage lenses. Done some content on those, love them. And the other cool thing that I really like on some of these lenses is the soap bubble bokeh. Essentially, that is when the edges of bokeh balls get really crisp and light. So instead of an even bokeh ball like you would normally see, these have that sharp edge and it's a really unique look that I personally really like. And then finally, there's usually a pinpoint right in the middle of the bokeh ball, which just adds another layer of character. So in short, you can get several of these for almost nothing online or pick up a single one for around 20 bucks shipped, which is really impressive. There's several different versions, different looks. So you can pick one out that you enjoy the look of. And another cool thing is some of these are clickless when it comes to their aperture. So on the front of the lens, you'll notice that there is an aperture ring. Some of them click, 
others don't. So if I take this rear cap off of this particular Indostar 60, one, you can see that I can start to close down the aperture very smoothly, which is really nice for a video. Others are clicky, you can hear that. One thing I wanna note with these lenses is often the focus ring can be really stiff. So what I ended up doing was buying a little bit of this gun oil that you would use to you know, oil the action of a pistol or something. And it works phenomenally with these lenses. So you can take a little bit of oil and right at this point on the lens, once it's all focused to infinity, you put a little dot all the way around and then start working the lens. That brought pretty much all my lenses back to life and I haven't needed to deal with any issues since doing that. So now let's talk about camera compatibility. These lenses will work on full frame all the way down. So something like this a7 III, Canon EOS R, a Fuji Super 35 millimeter, or Micro Four Thirds. The thing to keep in mind though is the mount, which is an M39, or often referenced as an L39. So you'll need to pick up an M39 II, whatever mount your camera has. And unfortunately, this won't work with older DSLR mounts. So if you have a Canon 5D with an EF mount, you're not going to be able to use these lenses. Same with the Nikon F mount. That said, most of these mirrorless cameras will work just fine. So you can do some research and uh, figure that stuff out. But for the most part, the Sony E, totally fine. Micro Four Thirds, the Fuji X mount, uh, the Canon RF mount, the Nikon Z mount, all those will be just fine with these adapters. So to use these adapters, it's very simple. You just take your lens and you simply thread on the adapter and you're done. You can put a lens cap on here, throw it in your bag and you're ready to go. Now, if you want to use filters on these lenses, you'll need to pick up a step up ring because as you can see, this is a really, really small diameter lens. And the filter thread size is really awkward on these, but you can buy them. So you will need a 40.5 to whatever size your filter is. So right here, I have a 40.5 to 52 millimeter. Now I can use 52 millimeter filters on this lens. So that's really it guys. Phenomenal little lenses that are 20 bucks and I think are tons of fun for video and stills use. Check them out in the link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, check out our camera guides. And as always, you can watch fresh videos here at DSLR Video Shooter every single Tuesday. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.